What's up? What's up, you guys? Good morning. How are you? Happy Saturday. Hope all is well. Jasmine Atten, Mystic at the Crossroads, coming at you with a very brief, very quick, yet effective Saturday morning money spell to help banish your debt, banish your blockages, basically help you with any of your financial troubles going on. Um, it's currently tax season, and I know a lot of people are waiting for tax returns. A lot of people are still waiting for unemployment benefits. Some of you are just in a financial rut, and some of you are still trying to recover from even Christmas. And so this particular ritual is going to show you an effective way to remove those blockages. Hi, everybody. Hi, Taisha. Hi, Stacy. Thanks for the hearts. Love you guys. Thank you so much for joining my live video. Please like this video. Please share it in your Facebook group, on your page. Send it to somebody that you love. Um, share it in Let's Talk Magic, Real Talk with Witches. If you are in those Facebook groups, that really helps me out. And it just helps circulate this content for other individuals who need it. Now, we all know we all love money, right? And it's a necessity. Money is a tool for survival. Um, hi, Michelle. So let me show you guys. This is so easy to do and so effective and it's something that i really feel like people should do once a month i believe in good morning thanks everybody i love the hearts and the happy faces please keep them coming hi melissa hi toshar um this is something that everybody should be doing on a monthly basis if you are someone who wants to keep your finances flowing or you're having financial trouble it's important to do some prophylactic some preventative you know like they say it's easier to prevent disease than it is to try to fix it right so before you even get into a financial situation why don't you do something like using a simple single candle to prevent that and even if you are dealing with some financial troubles i'm going to show you with this quick and very simple very easy very inexpensive ritual how you can fix that this particular ritual is one that i've been using for many many years this candle here that i've prepared is actually for a client i can't zoom in because the client's personal information is on here but i will talk a little bit about the significance of inscribing on your candle so first and foremost you will need several ingredients this is called a double action candle these come in many, many different colors and they can be used in several ways. We will learn a lot about that more in my Candle Magic and Conjure course that I will be launching. Uh, we're going to go over all of the different colors and the type of double action candles. But today I'm going to keep it super simple for you guys. Because a lot of people see these in the Botanicas and don't really know how to use them. So a double action candle is a candle that comes in two colors. And it is basically to remove the black side banishing and then to invite in whatever color is, um, whatever the second color is to the candle. Inscribing on the candle does two things. One, it kind of takes place of your written petition. And two, as your candle burns down, it's burning your actual petition. So you want to inscribe on your candle. Who else is joining in? Hi, Rachel. Hey, princess. Um, so with the black side, again, the black side is to banish or remove whatever your blockage is. So you would essentially want to write your name and from the, so you're going to hold it like this, right? And you're going to write whatever it is that you're trying to remove from the top down because we're releasing that energy and you can inscribe. This is a fairly, you know, large size candle. It does burn for depending on how your spiritual work goes. I hate giving time frames with these candles because I've had them burn down in two hours. I've had them burn down in like 18 hours, but it does relatively burn. I would say this is about a good eight hour burning candle. So you inscribe your name, you can put your birthday on there, that's optional, and you can put in very simple terms, very simple phrases, remove blockages. Let me see if I can read this to you. Um, so without going into all the details, I have remove all financial blocks from the name of my client, hexes, curses, evil eye, evil intentions, and a few other personal things on here that she needed me to include. On your green side of your candle, inscribing from the bottom up, because that's how we draw into ourself, you're going to inscribe again your name, your birthday is optional. I say optional for birthday because you're the one doing the ritual work, so you don't need to put your birthday on here. You can 
add certain things that kind of link the spell work to you. So bodily fluids is okay. Hair is okay. If you want to do a handwritten petition, that's fine. But personally, I feel like inscribing on the candle and setting your intention is good enough. So your name and then what it is that you're inviting to yourself. So let's say, for example, you're waiting on your taxes. You want to remove your block from your taxes and you want X amount of tax dollars that you're expecting to come in. If you've been waiting on unemployment benefits, you wanna remove the blockages from your finances and you want your unemployment benefits to be approved or whatever that looks like. If you are, maybe you're a business owner and you're waiting for invoices to be paid or contracts to be signed, so you wanna remove, and we're writing this out, right? Use a, um, don't laugh at me, you guys, I'm gonna show you what I used. I used to, I couldn't find my skewers, I was all out, so I used a corn holder. Um, use a pen, use a pencil, whatever, right? Just something sharp. If you are, maybe somebody owes you some money. Maybe your job owes you extra hours. Maybe you didn't get paid that overtime. Maybe your job isn't giving you as many hours as you want them to give you. So you want to remove your blockages and you want to increase your hours from maybe you're working 25 hours and you want 40. Maybe you want to work overtime. Maybe you want to raise, I mean, the... It's limitless of what you can do with this particular candle. So now let's take a look at how we would dress this. I'm using some coconut oil from Trader Joe's. Coconut oil is excellent. It's a, a neutral type of oil, but because coconut oil is known and coconuts are known for removing blockages and opening roads and opportunities, I always use coconut oil for things that I wanna banish if I do not have a banishing oil. So I don't have a banished debt oil, I'm all out. So I'm gonna go with coconut oil, but you can use a banished debt oil. You could use just a regular banished oil. You could use a Van Van oil. I mean, again, you can do some research, but the possibilities are unlimited. So this coconut oil, by the way, I do not cook with this. This does not go in my hair. This jar is specifically for magic. It doesn't even go in my cabinet. It goes into my witchy box. I also have some Fast Luck oil. This is Fast Luck oil that I made, and it's a combination of my signature money oil that you all know and love along with a lot of other things, but you can use an attraction oil, crown of success, road opener, money drawing, lodestone, prosperity, whatever oil you have on hand, you can use in place of. We're going to be using some good old fashioned cayenne pepper. Yes, the cayenne pepper that you cook with. I have a money blend. And what I say by money blend, I mean it actually is like money blend. This is my personal recipe. If you don't have a money blend oil, pick yourself up some um, either peach cobbler or apple pie spice blend from your grocery store, Ralph's or Kroger it is in the rest of the country because it's a combination of nutmeg, cinnamon, allspice, clove, and cardamom, which is essentially a money blend and then you can add other things to it should you want to. Um, optional you can also use patchouli powder or patchouli the actual leaf if you have it i love patchouli so i'm going to be using both of them because patchouli is good for um, inviting money into your life and then last but not least i have some fresh rosemary that i just went and plucked out of my garden i have three little rosemary sprigs or springs, whatever you call them, that I'm gonna place around the actual candle, but you can get some fresh rosemary from your grocery store for about $2. And this particular ritual, I do not recommend you using dry. I definitely suggest that you use fresh rosemary if you have it on hand, okay? So we're first gonna start with the banishing side of the candle. And the reason why I'm doing that is we wanna first clear off and remove the energy. And if you notice, I am going in a downward motion. A lot of people kind of get hung up on dressing it up, dressing it down. Honestly, you it's I don't want to say it's not a big deal because it does matter in this particular candle. If I was doing a different type of candle, I probably wouldn't be so hung up on it. But in this particular candle, because it's a double action, we do want to be rather mindful. So we're going to dress this down with the coconut oil. And then I'm just gonna rinse that off. 
of my hands so that I don't kind of mix the two oils. And then we're going to dress it, give this a good shake. This Fast Luck oil I made back in August during the new moon in um, Leo. And as you can see, I haven't used a lot of it. It's just really been sitting and marinating and fermenting. Um, not for any particular reason. I just, I wear so many other oils during the week. This one just, you know, I wear money oil and other stuff. So I don't get around to this one. But when I did use this oil, I um, wore it when I was in Vegas in the casino. And I want a little money. Not a lot of money, because if I won a lot of money, I wouldn't be doing this live with you guys. I'd be on the beach in Tahiti somewhere. But I did win a, <laughs> a little money with this Fast Luck oil, so. And then we're going to dress this in an upward motion. Um, you can also, now I'm working with powders. If I was working with herbs, I would probably add some honey to this candle. One witchy tip. Honey makes herbs stick. And two, you want your money to be attracted to you the way bees are attracted to flowers. But in this case, I'm not overly going to be crazy about that. It's still going to work. So here's my money powder. And I'm just going to lay it down like so. Because I'm going to roll my candle in here. You could pinch it on the candle if you want to. There's no right or real wrong way of doing this. The only wrong thing I'm going to say is don't put your fingers on this and then put your fingers in your face. You will be very sorry. Or anywhere else for that matter. If you guys are commenting, I can't see your comments right now, but I will go back through the comments and I will respond to any questions. It's just the angle that my phone is at. I can't read them, but bear with me. So now your candle has been inscribed. It has been anointed with the oil, and now we're going to roll it in our money powder for the green side and our cayenne powder for the banishing side. Also, I should have said this, but I cleansed this candle before I got started. So use whatever cleansing method you are comfortable with. You can smudge your candle. I rinse the candle down in Florida water. I make my own Florida water, but the kind that you get from the Botanica is perfectly fine. And then we are just going to roll this candle and try to get it as much of the candle covered as you possibly can. I don't know why this is actually kind of fun to me. I enjoy doing this. So we're gonna roll the candle. You can add glitter if you want to. It's not necessary, but you can to the top part, to the green part, to attract those spirits of good luck and good fortune. Don't be so hard on yourself if a little bit of the cayenne banishing powder gets on the green part or the money powder gets on the red part. It's not a huge deal. But you see, simple, effective. This took me all of what I've been streaming now for, it doesn't say, maybe five or six minutes. Um, and then the candle I'm going to place down on our witchy tray. Remember to remove your barcodes, by the way. These carry energy also. Our witchy tray, a.k.a. our beautiful silver tray from Dollar Tree. Um, secure the bottom of your candle with a little bit of melted wax. Fire safety first, people. And then we are going to place the rosemary around the candle and I'm gonna burn this in front of a photo of my client. You can, if you want to, place a photo of yourself or if you're doing this for, you know, a loved one, a partner, whoever, on your tray. Um, my only thing with that is when the candle burns down, there's a potential it could light that photo on fire, so you wanna be very careful. These trays also are super, super, super thin and I have, burnt my altar and I have beautiful burn <laughs> tattoos on my altar from candle work that's been burning on there it gives it character so no big deal but if you are someone that is don't want to ruin your furniture or your altar then you probably want to just be mindful when you're burning freestanding candles maybe place something a little barrier some extra foil or something under the bottom okay so that's it that's all i have for you guys for now let me see if i can answer a couple of quick questions um 
Let's see, do you notice a difference between using powder versus herbs or fresh herbs versus dry? That's a very good question. So for me, it's more so, it's kind of a combination of things. One, it's what's on hand. So what do I have in my, you know, available to me if I've run out of stuff. Two, herbs, dry herbs, I love working with them. The challenge is you have to watch your candles because they have a tendency of igniting and catching on fire. And what you, instead of having a slow burning candle that's burning at a steady rate, you have a candle that's engulfed in flames. And that's not necessarily a bad thing, but it can be a fire hazard. Um, when I'm dealing from a magical standpoint, when I'm dealing with situations that require a lot of energy, concentrated energy, like there's, for example, this particular situation for this client, I don't want her candle to burn in an hour. I don't want it to burn up in 30 minutes and I don't want to get a false reading of her wax because the herbs caught the candle on fire. So now I have all this wax dripping and I can't really interpret what's going on. So when I want to be able to have some steady control over my work, I want an accurate reading of my candle waxes, then I will use powder. Um, I also find some herbs are a little bit heavier than others in actual weight, and they don't stick to the candle as well. So if I'm working with, for example, my money powder has like 13 different things in it, and I took a motor and pestle and grind it for like an hour until I got into a powder consistency, it's hard to put 13 herbs on a candle and get them all to stick without making a huge mess. So that's kind of where I'm at. Do I notice a difference spiritually? Not necessarily because they all still carry the same magical powder. So I think it's more so preference. Um, what you have available to you at the time, you know, powders, if you go to a witchy store, powders are going to cost more than going to a grocery store and buying dry herbs. Um, in terms of do I notice a difference with dry versus fresh? Absolutely. So if I'm using fresh herbs or if I buy like the pack, the kind in the pack, you know, like they're still attached to their roots and they're living, essentially they do have more energy. They do have more chi behind them because they are still living or partially alive versus herbs that I got in a pack that's been sitting up on a shelf for I don't know how many months. They traveled on a truck. They came from wherever they come from. They've been handled all these different times. That's my personal opinion. Um, some people may disagree quite honestly. I feel like if you're putting your intention to it, the herb knows what to do. Rosemary, fresh, dry, living, whatever, it's still carrying that energy so it knows what to do. However, it's just like eating fresh food, like fresh food tastes better right? Fresh food tastes better than dehydrated food. So that's just kind of how I think of it. Um, but again, try it out. I say experiment, work with fresh herbs, work with dry herbs and see which one you seem to get better results from. Hopefully that kind of helps answer the question. That's sort of my standpoint on it, but every practitioner is different. It may feel a little bit differently. Um, let's see. How long, Tanae says, how long does this type of candle typically take to burn? I have a few of those, but haven't used them yet. Really good question. So it varies. Um, again, how you dress the candle will make a difference. And these candles, because you, you know, these are pretty large candles. Um, they are about 12 hour, eight to 12 hours but I've had them to burn down a lot faster. Again, energy has a lot to do with it. The situation that you're working on has a lot to do with it. But the candle itself, by itself, is about an 8 to 12 hour candle. So if you're doing this type of ritual, just anticipate that candle is going to be burning all day. So make sure that you're scheduling time that you can light it at a time you may be home and you can watch it. Um, another witchy tip, I do money spells in the morning. I do them in the daytime. Um, that's because one, I have, I'm very fortunate that the sun, as we all know, rises in the east and that's the way my kitchen window faces the east. So I get lots of beautiful sunlight in the morning, minus today, it's kind of gloomy here, but that energy of bringing in and renewal and starting fresh and the day starting fresh is kind of how I think about finances and attracting money. So I typically do money spells in the morning, um, because I'm doing a double action spell and I'm removing this issue with my client and inviting in finances. That's why I chose to do it on a Saturday. If some of you are wondering why didn't she do it last night for the new moon or why she didn't wait and do it on a Thursday or something to that effect. Um, let's see. Nugget says, can you still remove blocks if you stop doing work for over a year? Absolutely. Most definitely. You can, any time that you choose to pick up your spiritual practice and do some work, even if it's been a long time, you can definitely do it. Um, of course, we all know consistency is key, but 
you know, I've had breaks in my spirituality. I've had times in my life where I were going through things. I just wasn't in the mental or emotional headspace to do spell work for whatever reason. I mean, I'm not proud of it. I will say there's been times where I didn't have candles burning for a week or two, but it's just I had stuff going on in my life. And the minute I go back to it, boom, things start happening. So don't feel like because you haven't maybe touched your altar or done any spiritual work in a significant amount of time, you can't always come back to it because you can. The universe is open 24-7 like hospitals. It's there for you, honey. Um, let's see. I already did my candle magic last night. Can I go back and add some of your tips? Most definitely. You most definitely can. Um, I'm going to try to get, hey, Stephanie. Um, Michelle says that's because... That's because one I have, I'm very fortunate that the sun, okay, that's okay, that the sun as well as we know rises in the east. Yes, um, I didn't plan that when I moved into this house, but having the sun come through my kitchen is kind of nice. And um, I also get the moonlight through my kitchen. So you guys know I'm a kitchen witch. I dress all of my candles in the kitchen before I take it to my altar. So it's kind of cool to like look up at the sun or holler at the moon while I'm doing my candle magic. Um, let's see. Can you say, Anthony says, can you save this one on YouTube? Um, you know what, Anthony? Yes. Just for you. I will upload this to my YouTube channel. This is this particular ritual I wanted to share with you guys, but this and other rituals is what I'm going to be teaching in my Mystic Candle Magic and Conjure course. That is underway. Um, I've had a couple technical difficulties trying to get it uploaded to the platform to offer it to you guys. That's something that I'm working on this weekend. So my hope is it will be up and running and ready by Monday, but stay posted to my channel, my YouTube, um, not my YouTube, I'm sorry, my Facebook page. Make sure that you're in my Facebook group, Real Talk with Witches. You guys are going to be the first ones to get the link to sign up for the course. Um, hi, Heather. Let me see. I think I think I caught up on most of your questions. I have, I'm going to take one or two more and then I'm going to hop off of here. Leslie Yasmin says, where exactly do you place your pictures or pictures of the client? So yeah, I place for this particular client, it's going to go in front of her, um, the candle's going to burn in front of her photo. I actually have her photo in a frame. This is a client that has me on retainer. So I do workings for her monthly. So she has a small altar set up in my home and we kind of do things. We talk weekly. We I'm coaching her and I do monthly candle magic rituals. So you can take a photo from Dollar Tree and put your picture in it or you can place it under the candle, but just be mindful of fire safety. Um... Let's see. Monique says, good to know I'm not alone with burns from that tray. I have one on my kitchen table. Yes, girl. And, you know, I bought a new altar from, um, I was fancy. I'm just kidding. I bought it from uh, Ikea, and I was so excited because I had, you know, I don't spend a lot of money on my spiritual tools and on my altar stuff. I really don't. I believe in work with what you got. Like, my first wand was a branch off of a tree. And I finally said, you know what, self? You're a big girl now. You're going to go to Ikea and you're going to pick out an affordable but nice looking altar table and designate this to your space. So when I got a candle, mac candle wax burn on it, my first reaction was emotional. I was like, I can't believe I just burned my beautiful table. It wasn't that expensive, but it doesn't matter, right? If I paid $5 for it, that's money. And then my spirit was like, you know what? Calm down. This is what you do. This, is, this table is for burning candles on it. So to think that a burn isn't going to happen, it is what it is. No biggie. Um, the good thing is it did come from Ikea. And if I get tired of it, I'll just chuck the damn thing out and go buy another one. All right, you guys. I think that is... Um, Gloria says, where's the best place to get or order your candles? Ooh, good, good, good. Um, so one, you can always get stuff from Amazon if you're in a pinch, if you have Amazon Prime. You're going to pay the up cost because people are putting stuff on Amazon and they're charging a lot more. Do a Google search if you have a Botanica so you can actually Google metaphysical shop with your zip code or Google Botanica or Google witchy store with your zip code behind it in your Google search. Most cities have a spiritual shop. The thing is, you may not know about it because they don't advertise unless you're living in the Bible Belt. And even in the Bible Belt, there's a Botanica there. You just got to find it. Um, but some places that I do like as far as online botanicas, I like original botanica. Um, they're in New Jersey, I believe I do. I like their website. 
they're affordable. I like their products. They're very knowledgeable. So that is a, a good place to try to get your products from. Um, another place would be, oh, come on, brain. It was just on the tip of my, hold on, bear with me. Um, I do like Indio, but the thing is, everything's always sold out on their website. Like they just never have anything in stock. So you can try indioproducts.com. But yeah, you could try Etsy again. You're going to pay that up charge because people are buying wholesale. They're reselling it. Um, Lucky Mojo is another one. They have products. So I would probably do Original Botanica or Lucky Mojo. If I can think of anywhere else, I'll post it down in the comments here. I get my candles here. I'm in LA, so there's a Botanica on like every damn corner practically. So it's very accessible for me to get products. But Try Original Botanica or Lucky Mojo. Lucky Mojo, their shipping is a little slow and their shipping is a little pricey. So I suggest if you are going to buy from them, but they're good. Like they make all their products. They're amazing. If you are going to buy from them, plan in advance. Like don't buy a candle that you need. Don't order a candle today that you need by Tuesday because you ain't going to get it. But if you know the full moon is coming and I want to get some candles, I would place an order now because it you know, it took me about two weeks almost to get my order from them. And I would suggest buying multiple things. I think they charge a flat rate, flat rate shipping, which for me was $17. So if I'm going to pay $17 for shipping, I'm going to place a larger order. So just keep that in mind. But all right, you guys, I love y'all. Happy magical blessings. Try this out. I hope this helps somebody. That's my whole purpose of coming on here and posting all this content is to help you guys. Again, please share it. Leave comments or questions down. I will go back and look at your questions. Hopefully this is helpful. If this was helpful, let your girl know. That lets me know that you guys like videos like this and I can continue to produce them. And I can continue putting the work into the classes and courses that I'm planning to bring you guys this month. Okay. All right, y'all. Happy Saturday. Talk to you guys soon.